Hey, uh, my name's Matthew. I plan on being a high school history teacher post-graduation. And uh, one of the things that really resonated with me personally uh, in the reading was the idea that the way we introduce children to concepts like poverty can either uh, serve to reinforce or to challenge certain negative stereotypes kids might have about these things. Uh, I know personally in my school experience, like said, was said in the book, when we had food drives, you just turn in a bunch of canned food to somebody you never saw where it went, and whichever class uh, gave the most would get ice cream or pizza or some other kind of prize. And it really makes sense that when children are uh, shown things like poverty in this kind of a way, um, they'll never really understand anything about it, and none of those negative perceptions will be challenged. Um, I also really like the part about uh, the silent reading groups and how the teacher would go around um, engage every child's individual reading level and some of their interests because I think if I become a teacher something I would really like to do is make sure I know where all my students are at so I can help them out with anything they might need and also know some of their interests so I can tailor the lesson a little bit more to things that they would be interested in and they might be engaged more in what we're learning. Um, so overall I thought it was a really interesting reading um, but I do have a little bit of a question about um, the social justice uh, education framework. I think it's very important, and the book lays out why. Um, but every community is very unique and has its own issues. Um, so my question is, um, how do we adapt the social education classroom framework to the um, very unique struggles and issues of each community? without sacrificing the global and uh, multicultural uh, view that something like that needs to have.